Hey everybody, welcome to Biotechnica and today we are talking about post-doctorate in United States of the Americas. Yes, you heard me right. A lot of questions, a lot of excitement and a lot of hype and a lot of confusion. This particular topic receives a lot of query and we at Biotechnica sometimes get overwhelmed repeating the same thing again and again. So today I thought, okay, let me make a video with all the details all the insights about how to you know get into post doctorate in USA and what are the perks what's the benefit what's the downside all that included in one single video so let's get started So here is a thing about postdoctorate in USA. Many th people think that if you get a postdoc in US, you can literally print money. But that's a myth guys, that's not the truth. The truth is, there is a lot of struggle in there and there is a lot of hard work in there. And if you want to know every minute detail and every truth of doing a postdoctorate in USA in life sciences, then watch this video till the end okay here is what i wanted to talk today post doctorate in usa the hype is you are going literally going to print money that's not the truth many people think that you'll have a dream life in usa to some extent yes but not really okay what you are thinking that you'll have a mansion there that that won't happen but yes you'll have a very good lifestyle okay now Let's come to the fellowship. So how much actually you can earn. So now every university, every you know laboratory in US comes out with their vacancies, which is posted on Biotechnica Global, which is biotechnica.com. And that is where you get all the information. Okay. So now you know how to, uh, where to look for. Now let's look at what kind of fellowships you can get. So now like in India, you have CSIR. In USA, there is something called as NIH. Okay. Now NIH is, um, the organization and there are various labs certified by NIH like you have CSIR labs in India same way you have NIH labs in USA now here is a interesting thing you all should know if you are thinking that okay I will straight away get into NIH lab it may not happen there are various private universities also like John Hopkins where you can um, get uh, postdoc and then there are uh, some small smaller labs as well okay but here is the thing you should know always prefer a NIH lab because that's where the maximum facilities and maximum fellowship comes. How much that is? Look at that here. Now, if it is funded, if your project is funded by NIH, you are going to get $53,000 annually. Now, this is not the in-hand salary, but it is the annual gross salary which you will get from uh, the fellowship. And it varies from laboratory to laboratory, but more or less on an average $53,000 uh, is your annual salary. Now you will also get free insurance for your own self when you are in an NIH lab. While when you are in a private university, the fellowship will be lesser. It won't be 53,000 because it doesn't go by the guidelines of NIH. And uh, you will not get insurance or even if you get, you will get say lesser insurance. So that is where the coverage will be less. Okay. And you'll have to always co-pay and remember that um, US is a costly country. So that's where. Um, it is now this is a third part which is misuses there is a lot of misuse which is happening in us about this and that is uh, some labs will hire phd only they will hire you uh, the higher phds only but they will not call you a postdoc instead they will change the position name as project assistant or research assistant okay and then what they will do is they'll give you lesser salary so they'll give you less salary and they're getting the job done of a postdoc only but they're not calling you a postdoc. So please be careful of this. Please don't get, uh, you know, um, this misuse is happening in US and you have to be, uh, you have to know this now. So the preference you should give is NIH lab. Now let's come to the future, uh, future scope, which you will have. So when you will, uh, you know, um, start doing the postdoc later on, after you have finished the postdoc, uh, so you can get absorbed uh, in industry and uh, you know, you should know this, the industry there is like, okay, America is the biggest destination of biotech industry. Okay. That's the biggest 
uh, biotech industry which exists anywhere on earth that is in America. So obviously after your postdoc you can easily get absorbed into the industry. Not everybody gets but yes that's a very good uh, place where you can get to. Coming to the next which is academia so obviously you can become assistant professor, professor all such things in the academia. And the third is you can return to India. Now when you return to India you get something called as Ramalinga Swami Fellowship. Here also you get a welcome gift and you can start uh, you know your uh, regular Indian life okay. So that's one thing you get right. So now if you ask me uh, I would prefer industry because that's where the real money lies and re real um, growth lies and uh, the starting salary will be somewhere around hundred thousand dollars it goes up to you know. Um, $125,000 in industry but as a you know um, postdoc all you're getting is $53,000 that also is gross that's not the in-hand salary I'll come to the in-hand salary a little later now what happens is you have to know this when you are returning to India you are getting Ramalinga Swami fellowship and then you get absorbed into the academy or industry wherever you want you can always do that okay so this is all about the return to India and the future scope in US itself now let's come to the visa which you will get so you have to go from here on a J1 visa and J1 visa means you can't work on it at any other place so you have to work in that NIH lab apart from that you cannot work anywhere so if you think that you can outsmart the system and work somewhere it doesn't happen that way okay here is something you should know J1 visa you get in but later on you can convert the visa into a green card also but you have to stay there for long but that's a separate story but for now we are just talking about the J1 visa which does not allow you to work anywhere. Coming back, here comes the most crucial part which is taxes. Now whatever you will earn, so I showed you here in NIH lab you are earning $53,000 right. 20% of that will go as taxes okay and that's divided into federal tax, state tax and city taxes. So all that taxes okay 20% will go and now in hand you are getting somewhere around per month 3500 US dollars. Right, so uh, annually you're getting forty-two thousand US dollars, somewhere around th uh, three thousand five hundred US dollars you're getting in hand. So now after two years, uh, you you'll have the social security tax and Medicare tax also. So if you're thinking that it will not be there, okay, the taxes will increase after two years, and then uh, their tax cycle is not like India. In, in India we have April to March, there it is January to December. Now while you are on a J1 visa, if you have a wife or a dependent who wants to work, they can obtain a J2 visa and they can work. Okay, So J J1 visa does not allow you to work elsewhere but if, if there is a dependent who wants to work in US, they can do that using J2 visa. Now uh, the tax benefits you will get if you have dependents, so suppose you have a wife or children who are in US with you, so okay, you will get tax benefits but that gets offset by the insurance which I will come to later. The next thing which is there is expenses which you should know. The room rent is huge, the housing there is very costly and there is a huge demand for housing so that becomes like you get a 1 BHK in 1200 to 1700 dollar that means 50 percent of your income will go in uh, rent itself and then you have to pay the insurance of home also like in India you don't pay insurance for your home right but there you have to pay insurance of your home as well and then your monthly income uh, is 3500 out of that uh, now you, here's a breakup which I want to show you insurance will go 750 dollars uh, which uh, is a breakup in between uh, you know your wife and child if you have and then you will have other expenditure like utilities, utilities electricity bill to $50, groceries will cost you additional $200, traveling if you are going somewhere or you know if you have a car then the car will cost you and the car EMI, mortgage all that will cost you and then doctor's visits are very costly so you have to make sure that you always have insurance there. So this is all about the expenditure so if you are thinking that you are really going to print money that, that doesn't happen. You have to take postdoctorate as a training. It's like okay, you are learning something there. Okay, now the insurance there. If you have a wife, you have to pay four four fifty dollars for that. And if you have a child, you have to pay another three hundred dollars, around seven fifty dollars. You're going to pay for the insurance of your children and uh, wife, and uh, that's not covered in your fellowship. Okay, only your insurance is covered in your fellowship in NIH. Now the coming to the point is okay. We can't really print money, but can we really save money? Yeah, kind of. You can do that. So uh, there are, you know, uh, use Jugaad technology, we use a lot of Jugaad and we can actually do a lot of uh, permutation combination to save money, we are very good, good at that. So here is something I'd like to show you now, 
so you, okay you can do a lot of uh, you can do ro- room sharing like if you're a bachelor you can always share with some other indian or other uh, you know roommates you can share the car instead of owning the car you can share the cars you know obviously you, you will eat uh, less outside and the reason is because if two people just go outside and eat it will cost you easily 100 dollars so you can imagine it's so costly there and then of course if you get married and your spouse is also working then okay together the money becomes better and then you really start saving so yeah that's all about the post doctorate in us the work culture there is amazing uh, the work which you will do it will really enrich you but at the same time see uh, you have to know this that post doing post doctorate there is just learning things and then when you get a job in the industry which i'll cover probably in the next video when you get a job in the industry pharmaceutical industry or biotechnology industry that is where you actually will make a lot of money but during your post doc you won't make you won't be making any money whatever you will make will get spent okay now when you get into the industry that's a separate story uh, it ranges from uh, you know 80000 dollars to uh, $200,000 dollars also that so that's a separate story let's not talk about that but yeah what i showed you here okay post doctorate in us is a very good idea if you want to join the industry there itself okay and you want to settle down with a green card but if you want to re- come back to india even that's a good idea because in india you have ramalinga swami fellowship and later on you uh, you get a lot of perks and weightage because you have done your phd in us so all right so this is all about the uh, phd post doc in us and the financial breakup part of it which does not look rosy but definitely after you have done your uh, post doc when you join the industry that's where the real money lies that that's where the real lifestyle lies so this is all about uh, post doc in usa and the financial implications and the uh, journey which you will have the guides there the technology there is amazing but there is always pros and cons so calculate that carefully before you jump in so that's all for this video guys i will see you in the next video which probably is going to be on uh, salary in pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry in india and usa compared so that will be doing uh, probably uh, very soon i'll see you in the next one in the meanwhile you have any questions any queries any doubts put them down in the comment section thank you take care bye bye